Our film is called Daughters, and it is about a father-daughter dance, a very special father-daughter dance that takes place inside a jail. And it was the idea of a 12-year-old girl named Ferniqua who wanted to connect with her father. Um, and so it's just a very powerful story about um, family connection, and we're excited to chat with you about it today. Well, it's important because they ask for it. You know, the girls were in a room and we asked them a question about what was challenging, how would they tackle some of the issues that they were facing in their communities. And the number one issue was their disconnect with their fathers, specifically black fathers and black girls' lives. And it was different stories for each girl. They all had their own lived experiences. Some girls had experiences where they were like, my dad's great, you know, he's there every day. Or my mother and father are not together, but I still have a great relationship with my father. And some girls were like, I never see my dad. So the girls said we needed to just put together a dance with our fathers because that's a place where we felt like we could be vulnerable with them and maybe on the dance floor have this conversation about what we need and what's going on in his life so we can be comfortable in a safe space that we create on our own. And that's when Sister Faniqua that Natalie mentioned before shared with us that she couldn't participate. And unfortunately, her father was incarcerated. And it really just hit all the girls, and they were like, that's totally unfair. What can we do to, you know, change that? And they came up with this awesome idea themselves around taking this same dance that a lot of us know too well about a father-daughter dance that happens in a community, sometimes at a, you know, in a school building, in a gym, at a community center, hotels, but then they decided to take it inside the prison. Yeah, this film really hit home for me. We have another project at Simpson Street called Unprisoned, which is a comedy really about a father daughter where the dad has been incarcerated most of her life and he gets out and they try to live together. So our version that we've been working on for years at Simpson Street is kind of the comedy odd couple version of this. But when I saw the documentary, it reminded me of so many of the families that we met with when we were researching families for our show. And our show is inspired by a real story, um, Tracy McMillan's story. And I also was really lucky to go to a school where we had a father-daughter dance. Mm -hmm. And I know growing up, I grew up in, in a community in the Bronx where a lot of the girls I grew up with did not have fathers in their lives. But I went to this very elite private high school in New York City where all of those girls' fathers were in their mm -hmm. lives. And I, the film really reminded me of how our, you know, the zip code that we're born into or the given circumstances of our family should not set the trajectory for how much humanity we're able to have with our loved ones. Um, and this film does such a beautiful job of bridging the idea that fathers need their daughters and daughters need their fathers. And this unjust system that we call the criminal justice system, that it really separates families and tears them apart and treats these folks as if they're not human, that they don't get to touch each other, they don't get to be in community. And the film is about the need for us to pause these systems and treat each other like humans. When I saw the, um, the movie, I mean, the documentary, and I looked at the dance, I realized how much it really meant to me, mm. like, that I got to touch my father and see him, because now I don't really see him often since he, like, he's far away now. So, like, the fact that I got to, like, dance with him, it's just, like, a memory, like, that I'm going to keep forever. You know, it meant the world to me, you know, and the, the, the worst part about it was when, after the dance, that we had to separate from our daughters. You know, because the conversation me and my daughter had, you know, when she looked me in my eyes and told me, Daddy, I don't want you in here no more. You know, that was the that was the the line drawn for me. So, like I said before, I couldn't stay home for 90 days without catching a new charge. But after this dance and after I met Sister Angela, Miss Lisa, Miss Nat Miss Natalie and Chad, after all the conversations we had, then the dance and everything else we talked about, haven't caught a charge in six years. You know, so this definitely changed my life. My daughters, all of my kids changed my life, you know, and the world need to see this because everybody needs their father, you know, especially daughters. Like I said before, I was fortunate enough to grow up with both parents. I still have both parents in my life. But like Curry said, uh, we know a lot of people that don't have, you know, their father or parents in their life, you know, and, you know, it, it's, it's heartbreaking, you know, so we definitely... uh. This is definitely a life-changing moment for me. And even the dads that's not here, 
you know, that 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 participated in the dance with us, you know, and they're still incarcerated. Some of them came home, some of them still uh, locked up. And it's just other dads in the world that need to see this that don't, that's not in their kids' life like that. Maybe this will change their lives, lives like it changed my life. In the space of working with those men, you know you don't know what you don't know mm. in life. Um, and I've, I've always been taught. I was fortunate enough to be raised by both my parents um, and watch them through what I didn't understand as a kid. I didn't know what I didn't know, but I was always charged to be authentic. My dad used to say something to me. He used to say all the time, don't grow up to be a person to say I wish I had. And so I don't register regret because I have to show up authentic in every moment. Men are not often taught to be honest with themselves about the placement of their emotions and how your emotions don't have to be a hindrance for you, but if you don't address them and deal with them, they will be the juggernaut that you don't see or the elephant in the room. Um, and so coming into the space with these guys, I've been fortunate to have some fantastic mentors in the space of just male accountability um, and in, in the space of responsible fatherhood. And coming into these conversations, my very for first mentors in the space professionally um, would always fashion themselves to, to, to they didn't say it, I, I, I say it when I deal with men, I'm not your teacher. I'm a dad or I'm a man and I'm having a certain number of experiences and you're a man with a certain number of experiences. And if you're a parent, you wake up as a brand new parent of a brand new child every day, mm. no matter how old they are. So if that's the case, knowing the exploration of this journey, you're in this room as dad, Mark and Frank and the, and the other, uh, the total of 22 dads are here because you have a daughter and it's been deemed that you should be in this room because your daughter wants to be in this room with you and mom said it was okay, so you said it's okay. So let's be very real and vulnerable about what you're going to deal with that put you here, how'd you get here, and where are you going? Mm. Because regardless of whether you're behind this wall or whether you make it back out into the street, your child needs you and you need your child. Um, I think Mark is a perfect example and I'm an example of it. My daughters being in my life have caused me to change the trajectory of how I navigate because I have to be accountable to them and for them. And in teaching them accountability, if I can't model it and mirror it and own my own mistakes, or I walk into a room full of men who've put their lives on the line for all different types of things and have their lives on the line in that jail every day, and I don't show up authentically, it's not going to work at all. So just authenticity was what qualified them to be in the room. And that's how I navigate through those rooms. Yeah. I mean, we just hope that, yeah, we, we want global distribution. It's a really powerful story that I think whether it's on a local level or America or the world, I think a lot of people can um, take away something from this and, and it can inspire family healing. And um, so it just, we just really hope that it resonates and that, you know, someone buys it and we get to share it with the world. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's part of me being here, right? Like, I am I see my role as being someone who's an ambassador for the film. Um, I want to really champion the film and to let people know how important it is, but also to let distributors know that where this film goes, I will go, that I will promote this film, that I will stand by this film, that I'll do publicity for this film. It's, it's really a continuation of work that we're doing at Simpson Street in so many ways. The last time we were here at Sundance was with another documentary. We love coming here with docs because we really feel like storytelling needs to take place in all kinds of formats for these messages to get across. So having a show like Gun Prison that's in people's homes and making them laugh and opening their hearts is one thing, but then also making people take the time to pause and cry with us and sit with us and go to that deeper level of understanding and commitment to these families is also really important. So I love this film so much and I know that audiences all around the world will love it and that's why I'm here and that's why I'm standing by it and will stand by it with whoever buys it to make sure that we sell tickets and get eyeballs and make sure that people know and love these families as much as I do.